Hey guys, so after my recent video, Putting the Chronic in Chronic Illness, I was approached by Action for ME about taking part in their campaign for Hidden Faces of ME. Basically, they're trying to get people with ME to share their personal stories and put into words how it feels to have an illness like that in an attempt to help people without the illness understand it a little better. As I said in that video before, it's kind of a difficult thing to talk about and to explain to people who have no experience with it. And that can cause issues with the important people in your life because they don't get how you're feeling and you can't make them feel how you're feeling, so they don't know what to do to help you with it. A little background on me for those who aren't familiar with my channel. I was diagnosed with ME at the age of 12. Before that I was a very active child, involved in a lot of sports and drama and academic stuff, but obviously my diagnosis kind of put a lid on that. I am now 20, which means I've had ME for 8 years, almost as much time with it as I had without it. I don't remember how it feels to not feel like this. I have my good days and my bad days, but even my good days are bad in comparison to a healthy person. Getting my diagnosis changed my life. Some say for the good, some say for the bad, and depending on how I'm feeling that day depends on who I'll agree with. I left school at 16 because I was too ill to continue, but also at 16 I wrote a book in all that free time I had from not being at school. That book is now published, as is the sequel, and I'm working on the third, so I'm reluctant to say that the changes have been all bad. What's more of a problem is the fact that I'm never going to get over it. This is it for me now. I've made what I can out of some kind of crappy circumstances, but I am still never going to be as healthy as I was when I was a kid. And thanks to going through both puberty and my entire teenage life with a chronic illness, you can now add anxiety and depression to the list of health problems I have. I was incredibly angry and bitter as a teenager after my diagnosis. I resented the people around me, my family and friends and classmates, for being able to do everything that I wished I could still do. See, the thing is with an illness like ME is you can't just do something. Every little action you take, even the ones as small as brushing your teeth or getting dressed in the morning, has to be weighed against the pros and cons of how much energy it's going to take you to do it and whether it's really worth doing. You learn little shortcuts in how to do the necessary things with the minimum amount of energy, but they still take up energy, and then that's energy that you won't have later on when you might need it. Everything takes thought and consideration and purpose. There is no spontaneity. And that can be just the basics, like just your morning routine. Imagine how much that multiplies if you actually want to go outside and do something. There are so many analogies that I could use and have used in the past to explain how I feel. Spoon theory is a popular one, but people still don't seem to understand that there is a finite amount of spoons and it's a lot smaller than you'd expect it to be. I've tried explaining it as feeling like you have the flu only all the time. Or like you've just run a marathon and then have to get on with your day. Or like your body being surrounded by quicksand so every movement is like dragging yourself through it and you're exhausted before you've even begun. None of them seem to fit quite right. Probably because a lot of the time, even I don't have words for how I'm feeling. Just that everything is hard and exhausting and painful and anxiety inducing and terrifying. Because after a while you start to wonder if you're ever going to truly enjoy something again. Sure, there are moments, but it always comes with that underlying exhaustion. That thought of, this is fun now, but tomorrow I'm going to regret my entire life. Having ME is knowing that every action you make comes with a physical consequence and there is no way to escape those consequences. But worse, there's no judging exactly when they're going to hit. You can guess, sure, but there's no accurately timing when you're going to have good days and bad days. Eventually you get used to feeling like a terrible human being for cancelling something that you and other people have been looking forward to for ages, just because you happen to feel exhausted on the day. It's better now, but it's still not brilliant. And when all of my friends are going out and having fun, I'm usually sat at home on Facebook watching the selfies go up, and both wishing I could be there with them, and also kind of thinking that they're probably having more fun without me and my illness dragging them down. It's hard for my family to deal with, watching me stay at home when other people my age are going out and doing things, and making all of those impulsive, reckless decisions that you do when you're 20. There's no room for impulsiveness when every little bit of energy needs to be rationed out carefully. 
but you learn to manage. You figure out what works and what doesn't, what you need on your bad days, and how to stay cautious on your good days. I'm a lot better than I used to be when I was younger. I'm not healthy by any means, but I get by, and there are worse illnesses I could have. I have people who get it and people who don't, but I forgive them for that because even when they don't get it, they don't hold it against me. To those people who are the main line of support for us Spoonies, the parents, the siblings, the partners and best friends and kids. Those who see us every day, good or bad, and have to put up with the mood swings and the pain days and the unable to get out of bed days. You will never understand how valuable you are to us. If there is just one person in our lives who makes us feel normal, then they are worth their weight in gold. And we get that we're frustrating and a lot of the time we're not the greatest joy to be around. But we're trying our hardest, so be patient with us and be kind. You might be sick of dealing with us and our illness sometimes, but trust me, we're sick of it too. And to the people a little further out but who still have contact with someone with a chronic illness, please know that the most important thing you can do is just accept us, illness and all. If someone tells you how they feel when they're having a bad spell, even if you don't understand it or don't believe it, just accept it and ask what you can do to help accommodate that. Don't ask us to validate our feelings or question us if our illness is real. We don't need to explain to you the ins and outs of how exactly our illness works. And we don't need your approval to feel too ill to do something. And if we say that we've barely left the sofa all week, don't start telling us how lucky we are that we can do that because you've been so busy you've barely sat down all week. Because we would kill to be able to do that. We won't be fine with more sleep or feel a lot better if we exercised a bit. And sadly, no matter how much you wish it upon us when we say we're having a bad day, we won't get well soon. But we will cope and we will manage and we will do our best. Because if there's one thing this illness teaches you to do, it's fight for the good days because you don't realise how rare and amazing they are until you don't have them for a while. For more information on both ME itself and the Hidden Faces of ME campaign, you can click on the links down below. There are plenty of other people posting their stories and experiences, so go check them out as well, it's all good stuff. And if you want to see more videos from me, please do like and subscribe. Now, I'm gonna go take a nap, I think. Catch you later guys, bye. Hey guys, as promised, it's time for an extremely belated Yalk roundup and book haul, 